Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Lux News Network, and we're back with another interview. My next guest is a motivational speaker and master financial coach to move listen listeners to break the chains of debt, as well as give practical insight in how to create and build wealth. Her name is Karen Ford. How you doing today, Karen? Awesome. It's great to be here with you. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right. Um, can you tell us a few things about yourself, like uh, where you're from? Um, sure. Uh, if you're married, have any children? Um, things like that. What are your hobbies? Okay. Absolutely. Well, I am happily married. Uh, we have three children, ten grandchildren. Okay. <laughs> I know I look younger, right? Um, <laughs> I'm a retired registered nurse. Um, and became a master financial coach uh, several years ago and absolutely love it. Uh, as a nurse, I helped people get healthy physically. And now as a master financial coach, I help people get healthy financially. And both of those coincide because let's face it, uh, money problems can cause stress and stress can cause high blood pressure, heart issues, high cholesterol, the whole gamut. So I feel like I'm helping people on a broader spectrum. I enjoy uh, eating, <laughs> uh, but I also enjoy exercising and walking. So those are some of the things that I enjoy doing. And I surely uh, love investing and teaching people how to properly invest and win with their money. That really makes me happy. Good, 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 good. Um, let me see. Um, how how important um is our financial freedom? Oh, our financial freedom is so very important because the the shape that the government is in right now. And listen, even if the government was in good shape. My mom and dad always taught us nobody's supposed to take care of you except you. <laughs> so, you know, they didn't do a lot of handouts. I'm one of seven children, so there were not a lot of handouts uh, growing up. So they taught us, you know, we have a good work ethic. And so, you know, it's important to learn how to manage your money, because if you don't learn to manage your money, your money's out of control. So it's very important to have financial freedom, especially in today's world. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. What does the phrase money matters mean to you? I, I've seen it um, on your website. Well, the reason I uh, called, I have a book called Money Matters, actually, and I, and I called it, entitled it Money Matters for two reasons. Number one, money really does matter. I mean, let's face it, if you want to eat, if you want to have a roof over your head, money really does matter because it takes money uh, to, to survive. And the second reason I entitled it Money Matters is because that book uh, encapsulates all the matters surrounding money whether you want to learn how to budget properly, uh, if you want to take control of your money and get out of debt, how to demolish debt, how to build wealth. I cover a variety of ways to invest uh, to win with money in that respect. And then I also have a chapter on thinking right when it comes to money, because thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits, and habits become a way of life. So if we're constantly thinking, oh, I'll never get out of debt, I'll never get out of debt, I'll never get out of debt, guess what? That's going to come out of your mouth and that's exactly what's going to happen. You'll never get out of debt. Or yeah. if you think, well, I've, I've never had, I come from a poor family, you know, granddad was poor, he only had very little, daddy was poor, he had very little, so I guess I'm going to be poor. I'm going to have very little. It doesn't have to be that way. So thinking right when it comes to money is really vital if you want to win with money. Yeah, that, that, that is so true. The way you think um, influences your actions. Absolutely. Um, how can one learn to invest? Well, listening to wonderful podcasts like this, <laughs> also thank reading... You, 
Yeah, absolutely. The more that we can uh, teach ourselves, get the head knowledge, because you know, don't do it like a roulette wheel where you, you know, it's almost as if you go to Las Vegas and throw down a bunch of cash and you're hoping you win. Investing is not supposed to be that way. There's thousands of penny stocks out there, but very few penny stocks are going to make you a ton of money. So it's important that we listen to podcasts such as this, that we educate ourselves so that we know going in what that looks like and how comfortable are we with investing? Because I use this statement as a rule of thumb, this amount of money that I'm getting ready to invest, if I lose it, am I going to be upset? And that will gauge us on maybe we don't want to invest that entire amount. We have to look and know ourselves. Maybe I don't want to invest $5,000 because if I lose $5,000, I'm really going to be ticked off. But maybe you might think, well, you know what? Out of this 5,000, I'm comfortable with 500. If I lose 500, I won't be happy about it, but I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be the end of the world, so to speak. So we have to know ourselves. What are we comfortable with? Because we have to look at it as if, even though we're getting all this head knowledge and educating ourselves, the market can be very tricky sometimes. So we have to know, if I lose this money, am I going to be upset? And that will gauge us and determine uh, our comfort level and the amount of money that we're going to invest. Yeah, that, 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 that is so true. Um, that That's what I do. Like, let's say I made $1,000. Um, I vest, uh, uh, I, I vest like 10% of that. So like yeah. that'll be $100. So if I lose $100, I'm not too worried about it. That was only 10%. That's right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um tell us about real estate investing and um how can one get started Ooh, that's a, that's such a loaded question i love that because i am an avid real estate investor there's lots of different ways to invest in real estate you can invest in real estate by buying foreclosures you can go to a real estate agent and just buy it, you know, right off the market. Foreclosures are good as long as you know what you're purchasing before you buy it. You can also go through the state auditor office. Um, every state in the continental U.S. has what they call a state auditor office where they sell properties because people didn't pay their taxes. And so that's another great way to uh, acquire real estate. And I, I do that every single year here in Fairmont, West Virginia. And uh, I actually have bought properties for as low as $30 before, uh, which was pretty fantastic. Wow. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Do we have time? Is that okay to share? Yeah, something? yeah, yeah. You, you, okay. You, you, um, several years ago, something came up, a state audit auction came up. I bought some properties and anyway, after the auction, you know, some properties that don't sell at auction, you can still purchase. So I don't know why I was buying this particular property, but God did. So I, I thought it, I thought I was buying coal rights, you know, mineral rights, coal rights. And so I had never done that before. I didn't really know anything about it, but I just thought, hey, 30 bucks, you know, if they take the bid, they take the bid. So I bought it and I paid the taxes on it every year after I got the deed and didn't really pay attention to it. And I don't know, about five weeks ago, I got a certified piece of paper in the mailbox and had a certified letter at the post office. So I went and picked it up and it was a pretty thick packet and I didn't have the time or the patience to read through it. And it came from a place called Purple Properties. And I thought, Purple Properties? Who calls their business Purple Properties? Is this a scam? <laughs> so I took that packet to my attorney and I said, find out if this is, you know, if they're legitimate or not. What do they want? What do I get? You know, look through the paperwork. Tell me what it is. So he called me an hour later. He said, this, this business is legitimate. He said, you thought you were buying coal rights, but you didn't buy coal rights. You bought mineral rights in gas and oil. And they want to pay you <laughs> $68,000 to lease that property for the next five years so they can drill for that gas and oil. And if they hit gas or oil, they're going to pay you 15% in royalties wow. to which i said 
oh, goody. So I signed really quickly and mailed that back into them. <laughs> but I only paid $30 for that, for those mineral rights. And I didn't know what I was doing. And, and in some cases, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but that's another great way to invest in real estate, whether you're purchasing a piece of land, a, a, a piece of property that has a house or another structure on it, or maybe you're going to purchase property that's actually mineral rights. But real estate investing is a big, big money maker. And I actually have a book out on Amazon called You Can Do It. And that book is 14 bucks paperback, or you can pay, I think, $7.99 or something like that for the electronic. But that little book right there will teach you about real estate investing. It's If you want to get into it, it's it's really a great uh, money maker. Okay. You, and it's called You Can Do It. Okay. You Can Do It. Um, I'll make sure to post that in the link down below. All right. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. The debit or credit, which which one should someone use in short term and long term and why? Okay. Well, I have a rule of thumb. If you don't have any self-control and you don't pay off your credit card balance each month, then you should not have a credit card. <laughs> You use a debit card and some people think, well, I have to have a credit card because how am I going to make, uh, how am I going to make flight reservations? Well, you can do that with a debit card. You just have to make sure there's money in the account. You know, a lot of times people think that they have to have a credit card for various purchases and you don't because most places are going to take the debit card. Uh, Sometimes people think they're going to pay off that balance every, you know, every single month. But the truth of the matter is 91% of Americans that have credit cards do not pay off that balance each and every month. So they end up with, you know, they think they're getting a, a great deal, a sale price on something, but it's really not a great deal uh, when you add all that interest to it. And some credit cards are anywhere between 5.99% all the way up to 33.3%. So it, if you can't control your, your spending and you can't pay off that balance on your credit card each month, then don't have a credit card. Use a yeah, debit card. Only. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Um, uh, where should people put their money today? I... Uh, would recommend, again, check your comfort level. I enjoy the stock market, various stocks, uh, investing in, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? Grandma right. always said that. So you want to make sure you diversify, spread it around. Don't put all your money in one spot. I like the stock market. I like gold. I like silver. I like real estate. And I have invested some in Bitcoin. You know, I don't know where Bitcoin's going to go. I, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen, but I err on the side of caution. So I invest in all of those <laughs> because if one goes down, the other one usually goes up. So again, don't put all your money in one particular stock. Don't put all your money in one particular place. Spread it around. But I like gold, silver, uh, real estate, Bitcoin, stock market. Right, right. That that is true. Diversify. Yes. Um, what are some tips when buying groceries at the store? Well, first of all, don't use a debit card when you go to the grocery store because if you go to the grocery store with a debit card, by the first you know couple of aisles, you're keeping a mental note: how much am I spending? By the time you get down to that third aisle, that has gone completely out the window, and you really don't know how much you spent until the cashier rings it all up and gives you the total, and then you end up swiping the card or inserting the card, depending on if you have a chip or not. I say take cash. Why? Because if you take cash to the grocery store, you're going to spend 27% less money than you would if you used a debit card. 
Because if you take cash only, then you're keeping a mental note and you're going to come within 10 to $20. By the time the cashier rings all of those items up, you're going to come within 10 to $20 of knowing exactly how much you spent. Why? Because you would be very embarrassed to come up short. So I tell people, take cash to the grocery store because you actually have more control of your spending and don't go to the grocery store hungry. That is the absolute worst time to go to the grocery store. You're going to end up putting things in your grocery cart that are not on your list. You're just hungry and you're just throwing things in there. You have more control when you go to the grocery store, not hungry, as well as just with cash, no card. True, true, true. Well, I I'm going to try to... um. Go to a grocery store with, with cash. Yeah, I'm gonna try that out. Yes. Okay. Um. How can one save three thousand dollars in a year? You can set up a savings plan through your employer, or if you have some self-control <laughs> when you get paid, you're going to allot so much every two weeks or every week, depending on how frequent you get paid. And you're gonna set it aside you know, in a savings account. Every time you get paid, you're gonna treat saving as if it's a bill that has to be paid every time you get paid. Another way that you can cut costs is your utilities. How many times are we in our house and there's lights on in rooms that we're not in? <laughs> All right. And then before you leave for work, a lot of times people work eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, where they leave their house to commute. So before you leave the house, uh, if, it's, if you have the furnace running, turn it down four degrees before you leave. And then you're not heating using all that heat to heat a place that, you know, by four degrees that you're not there. Uh, air conditioning, turn it up four degrees. It'll be a little warmer when you get home, but you can turn it back down when you get home. Turn off the lights when you're not there. Electric's going up. All the utilities are going up. Cut costs. Make a grocery list before you go to the grocery store. If you don't have a grocery list, you're just throwing things in your cart that you know, you may or may not even need. Maybe you didn't even look in your cupboard and you already realized you've got four or five of those things before you went to the grocery store. Make a list and only buy the things that are on your list. That causes you to have self-control. It causes you to have discipline. It also causes you to spend less. Right, that's true. That, that, that is so true. Um, beg, borrow, or budget. Which one do you recommend? Budget. <laughs> we don't want to beg for money and we don't want to borrow. Budgeting is the best thing that we can do. And I know sometimes people treat the budget word as a four letter word. Uh, <laughs> it's not a curse word. A budget is actually you taking control of your money instead of it being out of control. You're telling your money what you want it to do. So if you want to go out to eat five times this month, you put it in your budget. If you're getting ready to put some new tires on your car, you're going to put it in your budget. You decide. I'm not saying, you know, I think sometimes people think the word budget means it's a, it's a beans and rice connotation or bread and water and that you're going to do without and it's going to be a horrible life. No, you can go out to eat. There's no problem with that. You just want to make sure that anything that you want to do this month and a budget needs to be done each and every month because every month looks a little different. I'm not going to go to a wedding every month, but I may go to a wedding in June where I want to have to buy a wedding gift, but I may not have to buy a wedding gift every single month. But the key is make sure that whatever it is you're going to plan, that you put it in your budget. Right, right, right. Um... What should you write down while you are budgeting? You need to write down whether you have a house payment or uh, rent, all of your utilities. You want to make sure that you allot money for groceries, um, your car payment, credit card payments, if you have them, any type of payment that you have. And then you also want to make sure in that budget you have a place for retirement, 
planning as well as saving. Some people don't have any an emergency fund. So, you know, if you're driving down the road and your alternator goes out and you don't have an emergency fund, what are you going to do? You're going to end up putting it on a charge card, on a credit card, and, and then you have interest. So it's important to have an emergency fund so that when an emergency occurs, you have the money to take care of it. That's true. That's that is so true. Um, what is a millionaire mindset? A millionaire mindset is knowing that you can do it, that you want to do it, that everything within you is moving you towards that goal. You know, because becoming a millionaire, contrary to what some people believe. You know, most people do not win the lottery. <laughs> There's one person in each state that wins the lottery. And so the chances of you winning that lotto probably are pretty slim. So having a millionaire mindset is not a get rich quick scheme or scratching off that or picking the right numbers. A millionaire mindset is you're making plans to make that happen. And so you're making investments, you're making wise decisions, you're budgeting your money. Hey, Warren Buffett lives in the same house that he bought over 50 years ago. Could he buy a million dollar house? Oh, yeah. a million times over, he could do that. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that a millionaire can't have the lifestyle, but he is he's curbs his spending even to this day, no matter how much money he has. And he's got a lot of money. Yeah. So having that mindset not spending, you know, and not thinking you're going to make all that money overnight because chances are you're probably not. <laughs> right. that, 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 that is so true. Um, what is an emergency fund and how can we develop one? All right. I tell people you need to have at least a thousand dollars in an emergency fund. Why? Because emergencies really are not surprises. Emergencies happen. Your roof on your house is only going to last 20 years, maybe 25. So when the roof starts leaking, that's really not an emergency, nor should it have become, become an emergency because the life of a roof is about 20 years. You know, your car is going to need tires. Your battery is not going to last forever in that car. Emergencies really are something that we can plan for. So I tell people, get $1,000 quick, quick, quick. And some people say, well, how am I going to do that? Look in your garage, in your basement, in your attic, because you have stuff that you haven't used in years. And my rule of thumb is if you haven't used it or seen it <laughs> or whatever or missed it for the last six months, get rid of it. Put it on eBay. Put it on a yard sale site on Facebook sell, or have a big yard sale. Uh, you know, you need to get that money quick, quick, quick. And some people say, well, I might use that. Hey, that might hasn't happened for the last five years. Get rid of that stuff sell it and get yourself a thousand dollars quickly in an emergency fund because you want to have an emergency fund because when an emergency arises you don't want to freak out you don't want to think oh no what am i going to do now all my credit cards are maxed no 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 we want to plan so get a thousand dollars quickly now let's say you start selling some of that stuff and you come up with 500 or 600 what hobbies do you have what, what can you do for somebody else? Can you mow a lawn? Can you do this? Can you do that to get $1,000 quickly in that emergency fund? Yeah, that, that is true. And it's important to have uh, hobbies and side hustles. Absolutely. And, yeah. That's uh, another way to have passive income. And yeah. Absolutely. Um. What is emotional spending and how can we reduce it? Emotional spending is when maybe we feel depressed or we celebrate. <laughs> we can spend for a variety of reasons. <laughs> oh, I got that job promotion. Okay, let's go shopping spree. Oh, I feel really down. I'm going to go shopping to make myself feel better. But never mind, you're not going to feel better in a couple of weeks when you get the bill in the mail. So emotional spending is because we want to feel good or because we are feeling good. We don't want to spend out of emotions or out of feelings. 
I'm not saying that we can't go take a vacation and reward ourselves. A lot of people have a yearly vacation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about tapping into our emotions and feelings to spend because we're feeling really down and depressed. We didn't get that job promotion. So now I'm going to go spend or we did get that promotion and now we are going to go spend when we're spending because of emotions or feelings that is emotional spending and both are dangerous. Both reasons are dangerous. That, that is so true. Yeah. Um, hmm. What are some money myths? What are some money what? Uh, myths. Like, what are some myths? money myths? That, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, money myths would be... Uh, I have to have a credit card uh, to lease a car. No, you don't have to have a credit card to lease a car. You can use a debit card. I have to have a, a credit card to book my uh, flight. No, you don't. You have to have a debit card. Um, let's see. I have to have a debt to function in this world. No, you don't. You have to have cash, <laughs> but those are some of the money myths. Uh, here's another one. I'll always have a car payment. No, you don't have to. You can pay off the car that you have and hold on to it and stay off the car lots for the next two or three years while you build up a, a savings to purchase a car with cash. <laughs> those are some of the money myths. Right, right. That's so true. Um. How can we pay off our mortgage early? You can pay off your mortgage early by practicing some of these principles. Uh, you know, you can, first of all, you can divide your house payment in half and pay a half of house payment every two weeks, but check with your mortgage lender to make sure that they will allow you to do that. Uh, something else is, of course, make your full monthly payment on its due date and then pay an additional $50 a month. And that will also hit the interest uh, on both ends now and for later. You'll end up saving thousands. Uh, you can pay an extra mortgage payment each year. A lot of times people are getting their income tax refunds. Take a portion of that money and make an additional house payment. You'll save thousands of dollars on that mortgage loan by making one extra house payment per year. Those are some ways. Yeah, good. Thank, thank you for um, that advice. Um, You're welcome. Should parents give their kids an allowance? I am not a, um, I don't like allowances. I like earnings. Uh, now that means, you know, because they're a part of the Ford family, they're going to have chores that they're not going to get paid to do. They're going to maybe have to make their bed. They're going to have to make sure their room is clean. They're going to have to pick up after themselves, whatever it is in your family. So maybe they're a part of the Cassell family. Maybe that means they're going to do this and that. They're going to have chores to do that they're not going to receive a reward or money for. But then you can also, instead of mom and dad coming home and you're doing everything, why in the world would you want to do that? No, have chores for your children that they're going to get paid to do. Uh, again, they're going to have chores that they're not going to get paid. Okay. Maybe they're an appropriate age. Of course, look at their maturity level. You're going to pay them 20 bucks to mow the grass, or you're going to pay them, uh, you know, for washing the dishes, whatever it is, you're going to, uh, assign chores to them that they're going to get paid. And if they don't get chores, if they don't, if they don't do the chores, they're not going to get paid, but don't give them a choice though. Don't say, well, if you do it, I'll pay you. But if you don't, you won't. No, you're going to do some chores that you're not going to get paid to do. But, you know, why would we not want to teach them young that in this real world, in this real world, if you want to make money, you have to work to do it. There's an old saying, saying, if you don't work, you don't eat. Right. right. So <laughs> we just want to give them an allowance for breathing. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. I like commission, paying them earnings, not allowances. Okay. Yeah, that that's true. That's a different way of looking at things. Looking at things. Um, tell us about your book, Money Matters. 
Oh, we touched on that a little bit. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. That's okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, uh, what stops people from their financial goals? People get um, down on themselves. They think that they can't do it. They think that they cannot follow a budget. But listen, if you're the one making the budget, then it'll be something that you'll be able to follow. Some people have been duped in believing that they'll never be more than what they are. And that's just, that's just not true. If you believe that about yourself, you're really doing yourself a great disservice because you, if you apply yourself, educate yourself, listen to great podcasts like this, you can pretty much do whatever it is you set your mind to. Right, 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 right. Um, how can young people today buy a house, get married, have children today, despite record high inflation? Saving, 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 saving. Don't get in a hurry. So many young people today end up buying a brand new house and they have two brand new cars. They end up with 2.5 children. Not sure how that happens. They've got a dog. They've got a cat. They've got all their kids in sports and they're up to their eyeballs in debt. Why? Because they want their parents' lifestyle right now but they forget that it took their parents 20 or 30 years to attain the lifestyle that they're presently living. So we have to practice patience. We don't have to live in a brand new house starting out of the gate when we get married. You start, you start small, start with what you can afford. Don't go into a lot of debt and purchase two brand new cars and make all these purchases because you want the lifestyle that you're that your parents are presently living. Be patient. It's important that we practice patience on this game of life. <laughs> right. That, that is so true. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that is, that is <laughs> well said. Well said. Um, is it important for people to pay attention to a to the uh, economy while they are making financial decisions and why? Absolutely, because uh, depending on the state that you're living in, you may or may not have a good uh, real estate market. It may be, you know, really high right now. And right now would not be a good time to make purchases, but it's important to look at the market. It's important to know where you are, depending on what state you're living in as you're making plans and purchases. You may not want to buy a house tomorrow, but maybe in six months you may, but you have to pay attention to the market and what's going on in the world economy as you do. Yes, that's, that, that, is, that is true. That is very true. Um, what are some tips for planning a vacation? Start with a vacation fund. You're going to have a budget. You're going to have an emergency fund. You're going to have a savings fund. You're going to have a vacation fund so that you don't get ready to take your vacation and end up using that dreaded credit card uh, to relax on vacation. And then when you come home, you're no longer relaxing because now you've got to pay pay that credit card. So I, I suggest to people start allotting so much money each time you get paid or if you're not going to do that and you know that you're going to get an income tax refund, set that a portion of that money aside for your vacation. Make plans to pay for the vacation before you actually take the vacation so that when you go to relax and you come home, you can still relax without having a credit card to pay for that vacation you were supposed to relax on. Um. We, we we mentioned buying a home. Um, when is the best time for for a person to buy a home? First of all, you need to have money. You know, it's good to have 10% down payment socked away. It's important to have closing funds socked away. And also look at the market because some mortgage lenders right now are very, very high interest. Some are low. Uh, so you have to do some shopping around um, you you want to shop around. So I can't really give you a timeline mm -hmm. as to when the best time to purchase a house, but you need to have money socked away. You, you don't want to buy a house and you get in the house and now you've got to start making repairs and you have no money. I mean, yike. 
You want to make sure you have money set aside. All right. Uh, one last question. Um, one, how can one retire early? Ah, retiring early. You start planning for that early on. Um, you want to make sure that you have a retirement fund established. You want to make sure, preferably, that your house is paid off if you have a mortgage. Uh, because when you go into retirement, you don't want to go into retirement with debt. You want no debt, pretty much, uh, especially in today's economy. I mean, look at it. Look at the mess that we're in right now. High, high, high interest rates food costs, high, high, high. So we don't want to have debt that we have to pay off when we get ready to retire. Yeah. All right. That, that is true. That is so true. Um, well, any uh, last comments, any uh, questions for me before we go? I want to say that it doesn't matter how much debt a person has. If you got into debt, you can certainly get out of debt. There is hope for every situation. Um, it's it's not too difficult. You you got into debt, you can get out of debt. Yes. All right, that, that is true. And um, the name of uh, Karen's website is karenford.org. And um, I'm going to post her the links to her social media, her YouTube account, her book, Money Matters, and her website link. I'll post all of that down below in the comments section. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Lex News Network. We'll be back with more episodes and different uh, guests and new questions to ask them. Um, and we're slowly growing the channel. We came a long way from 10 subscribers. Now we're at uh, 105, still growing. So, yep, uh, exciting news and a lot's going to be taking place. So thank you for tuning in. Okay, thank you, Karen. It was nice meeting thank you. you. Hey, if I send you a link for a Google review, will you fill out a Google review?